Hi, I'm Charles Naylor, and this is a demonstration I did with my Chemistry of Energy class today, and I thought it'd be fun to video record it and share it with everyone. This is sometimes called painting with milk, and you can do it with ingredients you probably have in your house. I need a plate, a container of milk, uh, whole milk works fine, 2% will work too, which is what this is, some dish soap, some food coloring, and you need some sort of sink, I have a bucket here that I'm gonna pour it in when I'm all done, okay? So the plate should be clean and dry, and I'm just going to carefully pour the milk into the plate, okay? And I'm pouring enough milk in to let it uh, cover the bottom, and I'm gonna let it settle for just a little bit because I want the milk to be nice and still before I put the food coloring. I have four different colors of food coloring. I find it works best if I just put the, a drop or two around the edges. So I'm gonna put in some blue here. And then I've got some green. I have some red. And last but not least, I have a little bit of yellow. And you can see they're diffusing out a little bit, but they're really not moving that much, okay? This is gonna change when I add the dish soap. This is palm olive. You could use Dawn. And I'm gonna try and put the dish soap right in the middle. And as soon as I put the dish soap in, it changes the surface tension. Okay, milk is essentially water with some milk fats and some uh, proteins and some milk solids and some other stuff dissolved and suspended in it. And you can do a similar demo if you just use water and put pepper on the top. And as soon as you put that first drop of detergent in the middle, it changes the surface tension and the pepper, which is essentially held up by the surface tension, will all go to the edges of the water on the plate um, this is a little bit different because uh, it goes away so quickly, it sets up some currents and uh, it carries the food coloring, which is just basically dye with it. And so you can see, I'm gonna just get a little bit closer. Uh, essentially there are places where the dye was swept under on the edges and maybe it was already a little bit under the surface to begin with and now it's kind of coming back up to the surface and we've got this motion that was established um, just by putting the drop of soap on to, ch to change the surface tension. And so I've got some nice reds and yellows welling up. Now all of a sudden I've got some blue and red swirlies coming up there. There's a sort of green upwelling here. Uh, I really don't think that the patterns of the clouds on Jupiter and Saturn are caused by uh, this sort of soap and milk, but it does a little bit remind me of some of the colors that you see there and some of the swirling patterns. Um, we don't have a great red spot, although I've kind of got a great yellow spot here. So anyway, this is a very simple demonstration. You just need a plate, some milk, some dish soap, and uh, the more colors of food coloring you've got, it works pretty well. As you can see, this has been going now for a couple minutes. It's still going pretty well. Uh, if I kind of zoom in, you can kind of see the color is still welling up. Um, eventually, entropy being what it is, I will get a mixture of all these colors. Uh, it usually winds up being kind of a greenish khaki color, which makes sense because you have green and then roughly equal amounts of yellow and blue, which also make green. So three-fourths of it is green and then the red makes it a little bit brownish. Um, I have the bucket because I'm going to put it in the bucket when I'm done, but uh, I just thought that people might enjoy this. It's kind of fun. It's kind of pretty. And, uh, you know, not quite fall colors like on the trees, but uh, definitely some beautiful colors 
And again, Charles Mailer, Lycoming Chemistry and Biochemistry. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.